Hey guys, it's Mike with Mamco Machining here. Welcome to week five of owning a small machine shop. I want to start off by saying thank you for everybody that's made it this far in all the weeks here. Uh, we greatly appreciate everybody's support. Um, this week we're going to kind of continue the same theme as last video. We're going to show you guys some organization stuff that we've done in toolboxes. Uh, one of the main highlights I want to do though is I just bought a new 5C collet uh, little rack that fits in toolboxes and it's, uh, that's what we want to show you guys first. After that, we're going to show you guys a welding cart we just repurposed out of a tool drawer. Um, so it's one of those roll around toolboxes that we uh, turn into welding carts. Um, we put some hooks and stuff on the side to help all manage our wires and stuff like that. So we want to show you guys that and everything else that we've done inside there. Another thing is I want to let all my viewers out on the East Coast that's being affected by the hurricane know that everybody here on the shop is rooting for you guys and help, we hope you guys pull through. Um, another thing is I recently picked up some travel indicators from an auction. Um, got a bunch of these that we uh, we're not going to use all of them So we want to try to give one of these guys away to you guys in the video since we just hit a thousand subscribers That's awesome. So we were trying to give back to you guys uh, a lot of other youtubers do this So we like the idea of trying to help you guys out since you're trying to help us out um, So if you guys want to stay tuned in the video later in the video We're going to tell you guys how you guys can go about winning one of these um, So I believe next we're going to go ahead and go over to the toolbox where I've got the collet holders and we're going to talk about those Alright guys, here we are over at the toolbox over by the uh, door. Um, this is where we kind of uh, stage some of the stuff coming in and out of the shop. Uh, some of the grinding work we have up here, uh, we just, right before we're ready to go out of the shop, we throw it on here so we don't forget to bring it out and send it out to the customers. Um, so this is where I wanted to talk about the uh, 5C colletizer storage racks that we just purchased. Um, we purchased them from a guy named Dave Neahouse and he owns Rapid CNC and they are located in Sheboygan Falls, Wisconsin. Um, we were at, on the market looking for some, something to hold our collets a little bit better. Uh, we were currently using some of those flimsy metal collets that you kind of hang on the wall, the racks. Um, they weren't labeled, so you kind of had to organize them yourself. And then when you were in a hurry looking for one, you had to go through and pull out and make sure you had the right one and everything else. Um, another thing is there wasn't really good wall space to put them anywhere, so they were always kind of in the way. Uh, so here they are right here. Um, as you can see, uh, we have them organized here. Uh, I believe we go all the way from uh, 9 30 seconds to uh, 1 inch. And uh, all the major ones, another thing I like that Dave did here, all the major ones that you would use, so the common ones like a 3 8, a quarter, everything like that, are marked here. Uh, so if you're looking for something quick and not an oddball size, they're marked with little dash marks. Um, so this top tool toolbox is where we keep them all. Uh, they came flat packed, uh, meaning the sides weren't on them. So all you had to really do when we got them in the shop is uh, I threw a little glue on them, the surfaces that were going to be connecting, and uh, then just screwed them together. And then after that, it was pretty much put them in the toolbox and start using them. Uh, another thing I like that Dave did here, uh, he painted them black, or I guess he originally used white material, painted them black, and then did his engraving so the numbers would show up white. Uh, as you see here, I got three standard ones. Uh, these are the three first ones I bought. I fell in love with them. So then we went back to them and bought another metric one here. Um, so that's really nice when you're using metric stuff. Odds and ends stuff don't fit in the other collets. Uh, we bought a plain one with no numbering on it here so we could put our square ones and stuff like that. And some of the emergency collets we had are the odds and end hex ones that we used. Um, that being said, these things were great. Uh, best thing we found on the market so far. Um, I'm really glad with our purchases that when we bought these because it made it hassle free to set them up. And then once you got in the toolboxes, pretty much start using them. Also, guys, I'll leave a link to his website in the bottom of the page. So if you guys wanted to go check out his products, you can. Uh, he does sell a couple other racks that I know of. Uh, one of them is a small Morse taper uh, holder. Uh, so if you wanted to look to, uh, start organizing your small drill bits a little bit better, you could get one of those. Uh, I'm actually looking at purchasing one of those so we can help, help the shop out a little bit. Another is an ER collet holder. So you can hold your different size ER collets and keep those organized. That would probably fit in the toolbox, I believe. So we're looking at one of those as well. Alright guys, well I got you over this toolbox too, like I promised in week one. Uh, I told you guys we were going to start going through our toolboxes and show you what we have organized in each door. So while I'm over here, I'm going to go ahead and do that with this toolbox. Um, we have two rows of drawers down here. We have a left and a right. I'm going to go ahead and start with the left side. Uh, in this top one, we just have a bunch of uh, used end mills that we use for roughing stuff in. Um, we just throw them in this drawer when we need them and we pick them out for roughing stuff in. Uh, in the next drawer, we have... A bunch of brand new end mills that we picked up over time 
Um, every time we can, we pick up new end mills that we can get them for a good price. Uh, if we don't need them right away, we throw them in the store so that when we do need them, we have them and we can just pull them out and start using them. These are all brand new stuff, uh, ready to go for the next job we need them for. Uh, this next one down here is just some odds and end taps. Uh, we got some big pipe taps down here. Um, just some odds and end taps that we picked up and didn't really have a place to locate them. Uh, so we just threw them in here until we need them or until we find some a job that needs them. So we can pull them out and use them. And in this very bottom drawer we have uh, some more brand new cutters that didn't fit in the top box. So this is kind of just an overflow from the uh, second drawer I showed you. Um, also there's some bigger cutters down here. Uh, some big facing cutters and stuff like that that we use on our machines quite regularly. Uh, over on this next side, uh, the top drawer, we have all of our boring bars. Uh, we throw our boring bars in here just because we, we had them in a smaller container, but then we ended up just getting more and more and more, and we like to try to keep all of our boring bars together. Uh, so we have some laid boring bars in here and also some mill boring bars you can put in the boring head. <clears throat> this next one is some dovetail cutters and some radius cutters. Uh, just another fine example of not having anywhere else to put it, so we started uh, collecting them in here so that they were all in the same centralized area. Uh, this next drawer is some uh, parts to fix our bridge port. Um, we're working on restoring our bridge port whenever we get some downtime. Um, it still runs fine as it is, but we just want to completely restore it in, on some free time that we have. And uh, we're going to get to that. I believe that's what the next drawer is too. So we wanted a place to keep the parts brand new so we could slowly accumulate them over time. And whenever we are ready to uh, restore the bridge port, we had everything located in one spot and ready to go. Um, so I believe that's all for this uh, toolbox. Uh, the next box I'm going to show you is a welding cart that we put together. It's actually the same toolbox as this, but we made, uh, we made it for a welding cart and put some cool stuff on it. So I'll see you guys over there. All right, guys. I'm over here at the welding cart I talked about earlier in the video. Uh, we were able to pick this cart up for a decent price. Uh, the toolbox has a bunch of uh, nicks and dings in it that you can see from the video here. Uh, so we picked it up, I believe it was about half price when they sold it to us, it was just from a local hardware store. Um, the first thing we did was take the wheels off. Uh, I bought a piece of quarter inch plate for the bottom so that I could extend the bottom to put a gas tank on the side. And then I moved the wheels out a little bit to give it a little bit more stability when rolling it around. Um, this is just a good place on top too. Uh, we keep our Miller plasma cutter and our Lincoln TIG welder here uh, just to kind of keep them centralized and easy to use so we don't have to drag them from workstation to workstation we can just roll the card on over um, it's got a bunch of drawers here on front that I'm not going to go through this video but we keep our welding supplies here uh, one thing I do like about this uh, toolbox is the bottom two uh, box are big enough to fit a helmet in so it's nice to keep your box in so you don't get grinding or your helmet in so you don't get grinding dust and everything all over it um, we got some more cool stuff on the back side some hooks and hangers I'm going to turn this box around and show you guys that side of it and talk about it a little bit more over there Alright guys, I got the cart flipped around here. Uh, these are some of the cool things I have hanging on the back side here. Uh, the one things I wanted to mention were these rod holders from uh, ZT Fab. I'll leave a link to their website in the video too, but what you guys can do is you guys can buy these tubes with the holders. And it's a good place to keep your uh, all your rods and stuff dry so you guys can store different kinds of rods in here. We have written on top of the rods holders what type of rods they are just for our convenience. So keep everything nice and organized, some of the common stuff we use quite frequently so it's just with the cart you know um, another neat thing that we just purchased recently was this uh, foot pedal holder uh, the foot pedal is kind of a weird thing to store on this cart uh, just because it was always dangling around so we bought this foot pedal holder all it does is uh, it just slides in there and mounts on the side of the toolbox it's actually pretty neat um, so that's pretty much it for here there's a couple more things we want to do to this over time uh, you can see a couple cords draped around and sitting on top we're gonna try to buy more hangers and try to figure out what's the best way to hang stuff over time but as of now what we have is working wonderful for us and I'm glad we did what we did um, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video here in a little bit so I'm gonna take you guys over and talk to you guys one more time about how you guys can win the indicator as I promised earlier alright guys we made it to the end of the video here a um, couple special things I wanted to do at the end of the video here is one give away the indicator and two I kinda wanted to read through some of your guys comments you've been leaving um, so the first one, a guy commented on the last video, he wanted to know what kind of speeds you wanted to set a metal cutting bandsaw for. Uh, and the speeds that we know is somewhere between 175 to 250 uh, surface feet per minute. Uh, so that's usually what we tried to aim for when we reduced our motor over there. Um, the next one was how to get new customers. There's no really right answer for this one, um, but the main one I can tell you guys is just to go out and get your name out to, to the industry. 
uh, do some door knocking, do some sales. Um, always be consistent with your work when you get one to keep the customer and always produce quality work. Um, another comment was, uh, what size jobs do we take in? Uh, we're not really too picky about what size jobs we take in as long as they make money. So that's always the key thing we try to look at is if we can make money off the job, we usually bring it in the doors. Um, so that all being said, I appreciate all your guys' comments that you've been leaving. Um, all of them have been pretty supportive, and if you guys keep leaving good comments, we'll keep uh, highlighting some of your guys' comments in our videos. Uh, so it's time to give away this indicator. Uh, like I said earlier on, this isn't... Uh, this is just a travel indicator, zero to one. Uh, picked up a bunch of these at an auction. We just wanted to give one away to you guys. Um, so how you guys get one of these is to make sure you guys are subscribed to our channel and then leave a comment below and then we will randomly pick a comment below and uh, holler you guys out next video. Um, so until then, keep making chips and I'll see you guys next week.